After a lot of work, I'm excited to announce Tailwind Motion, a plugin designed to make adding animations to your project effortless. With presets and infinite customization, it's built to help you animate faster and smarter. Here's why you'll love it. Oh boy, this is gonna be an exciting one. As much as I love Tailwind, it doesn't help you much with animations. You can do them in Tailwind, but you do it by adding them to the config and doing all the work yourself. The idea of animations that I actually feel like I have control of at a component level is something that doesn't associate with Tailwind in my brain. And I am really excited to dive deep on Tailwind Motions with y'all, as well as some of the alternatives, including this cool new project I just heard about called Glaze. Before we can go deep into glazing all these cool things, we need to hear a word from our sponsor, AppRite, the all-in-one backend platform built for us React devs. What does that mean? Let's take a look. They built an all-in-one platform that has everything you need from auth to databases to functions to storage and even more. Even niche production things that you'll need like automatic database backups, all huge essential stuff. What does it actually look like to set it up though? Obviously I'm picky about file uploads as the creator of upload thing, but I haven't seen upload code that looks that simple other than ours. Still really cool though. And that's what they have for everything, including but not limited to real-time sync. And not just on the web, by the way, this works great on mobile, especially React Native. You can almost think of these guys as like the what Firebase should have been. And if you're worried about them owning all your data, you don't have to be because you can host it in your own cloud and it's open source if you wanna just go do it your own way too. It's a full open source platform and what they built is pretty legit. And while they work great for React and Next devs like us, you can clearly see they work for everything else too. So what are you waiting for? Go give AppRite a shot today. Check them out at soydev.link slash AppRite. Oh boy, I'm so excited to see why I'm gonna love this. I already just from the syntax here, really like where we're going. Let me pause on that syntax. Motion rotate in 45, motion ease spring bounciest. So it's going to rotate in 45 degrees. So when it comes in, it's gonna rotate. It is also going to spring the animation. So it's gonna go back and forth after. Yeah. You have my attention. Check it out at rombo.co slash tailwind. We made the API intuitive. You want to slide and fade effect? Just use motion translate X in 25, motion opacity in zero, or opt for a preset like motion preset fade for a quick implementation. I cannot tell you how many projects I have put that effective preset in. Like any one of my real projects, we'll just click pick thing. We'll go to my tailwind config. And sure as hell, in every project I have made, I have been rewriting the same fade in and fade in down code. Fade in down starts at translate y negative 10, opacity zero, and then it goes to opacity one, translate y zero. And standard fade in is just the opacity part. I even have a fade in slow, which is for things that are going to take a second to load. It's a little CSS hack I do where I can start the fade in Later, it still feels just as fast What from 50 to 100 is the same, but 0 to 50 doesn't show anything, so it won't show bad loading states and whatnot. Animation, accordion down, accordion up, fade in slow, but like I have to write all this boilerplate in every single project I have using Tailwind because I want to be able to do a fade in. If you want to know how serious I am about a project, go look to see if I've added the fade in animation class. If I haven't, I haven't put that much time into the UI and UX yet. If I have, yeah. Interesting. What do you have here? And this just Tailwind CSS Animate, a plugin for creating beautiful animations. Oh, apparently this already existed and it's by Jamie. Interesting. I could probably have used this already. Good to know that this exists. Now we have yet another thing to compare against. So we have Tailwind Animate. We now have Tailwind Motion. And as I mentioned before, Glaze is also an option. Before we go to the site, wanted to quickly call out the Tailwind Motion is pure CSS, so there is zero performance hit. It covers a lot of cases out of the box, but if you need more, it's fully customizable. Adjust durations, delays, or even create custom animations unique to you. Very, very good to see. They also open sourced it. I just gave it a star even though my face is covering it. I promise I actually did, because I am very excited to see this project and where it goes. Let's take a look at the site. I like this as like an example with the homepage showing all of these demos. A typewriter preset's actually dope. This is one of those things that's like really annoying to DIY that just having built in as CSS is really dope. That's really cool. I, I might use this just for that. Honestly, I have a few places that would be dope. Motion preset shake, another classic where it just goes, does a little like shake left and right when you hover over it. Rotate in, not as common a use case, but when it's useful, it's useful. 
being able to do translations like this, where you move X and Y without having to preset create it in your config, huge. And bounce, not the most common thing. Really nice for it to be that simple. It's accessible. It's got a simple interface while still being customizable. And it's performance tested and optimized. Again, it's all CSS. So it's not going to affect your runtime performance in any meaningful way. You just include the tail and CSS motion plugin. And from there, it is very easy to use all of the cool things that they have created. What does Flowmoji do? Oh, a confetti one built in. That's really cool. Pop, blur. The blur in is actually, I need this for pick thing right now. Okay. <laughs> We're installing this and setting it up on pick thing. Let's do it. We get to add that. Nice. Look at that. I already had Tailwind CSS animate. I forgot. Yeah. These animation things I built here, these are not part of what's built in. Like I had to build these myself. And as far as I know, Tailwind CSS animate requires I write those still. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Today I learned. I want this right now though. So we're going to motion preset. I'm going to blur it down. See how that looks. So if we go to an image component, image TSX, animate fade and slow, no longer. Motion preset blur down. I am so excited to see this. Oh, I think I still have the like animate fade in on other shit. Oh, th this one I actually need the fade in slow for. So we're going to undo the change I did there. And we're going to put it in here instead. That looks really cool. That looks really cool. I want to kill the, the grid animations though. At least the fade in down. Honestly, I'm just going to kill it entirely. See how it looks. Find all my animations, because I have a lot in here that are kind of trashy. Yeah, the image grid needs that killed for sure. That one's fine. Image layout pieces, that's fine. And then those I don't know. Oh, oh, I figured it out. I have the, C the Tailwind Animate plugin because I'm using Shad CN. I didn't install that shit. Checkmate, CSS people. It's weird how inconsistent they are. That is my immediate... Oh, I know why. It's because this doesn't come in until it's loaded because of the weird loading state hot swapping code I have here. I kind of want to move this to the whole thing. I'm going to regret that. Let's see how it looks, though. That's kind of nifty. Not going to lie. That looks pretty solid already without doing things right. Oh, do I not have this in... Um, Transparent images. That looks great. And that was so little effort and I suck at CSS. Ooh, that is good. Let's keep reading. I want to know more. If I'm committing to this, I want to commit. Rombo creates tools for creative marketers, designers, and engineers. Shout out to them for making this and also open sourcing it. These are the types of things lots of companies will like sit on and hide from people. And they are not doing that. Do they not have docs? It looks like this is their docs. I understand making docs is hard. Oh, cool. The website's using Astro. But the only page is the home page. Yeah, rip. See the Dev and GoVet image thing to make them show at the same time? Yes. And I DIY'd a similar thing. But if you have the link, that'd be useful because I kind of want to use his. I had built mine around the same time and just didn't bother playing with his enough. I want to try the typewriter one out. It's just motion preset typewriter. Let's try it on the home page. I'm so curious how it actually looks. HB2. I want the text here. This paragraph, yeah. Do I need to put something like this? It'd be cool if I had real docs. That's like the biggest hesitation I have here is that it doesn't have docs. <laughs> Pick thing is the best ass. That's great. Love that. Thanks. Okay, so it doesn't quite work for this type of use case because you have to put the number of characters that it is 
rendering and it only will do one line of it. But what are the chances that we were told we have the best ass? I'll take it. These are the things that having real docs can be really helpful for. And I get they're still early. I get this is a, a fresh release, but it's a little sad. Everything else here seems awesome. I don't see the customization, especially without like documentation. Like it shows that I can pick these different numbers, but how do I like wait and then do the fade? Because that's the thing I often have to do is I want to do nothing for an amount of time and then I want to fade in. And it's not giving me quite that level of control. So I don't agree that it is that configurable, at least in its current implementation. There's obviously a lot of potential. But I want to emphasize that this is still early. Oh, they have a delay. Okay, never mind. There's a delay that you can apply, which is very, very handy. And apparently their GitHub has something a little closer to docs. Oh yeah, this is what I was looking for. The delay is the big thing I was missing. That is really good and will make my life much better. And then they have the translate modifiers with positive and negative for from below and from above. Really nice to have that baked in. I always felt weird about the negative for things in Tailwind being in front of the, the noun just because math, but when dashes are used to separate things and to represent negativity, it's hard. Combining works fine. For exit animation, simply replace in with out in the class name. Okay, that's really cool. I didn't think they would have exit animations. Um, usually that's really hard to do with CSS. I want to know more. We're going to play with that. Let's go back to images. Let's add a fade out images. Motion, fade, I guess motion preset fade. I want fade in. No, oh, I guess this is what we would want. Motion opacity out zero. Usually this doesn't work because when you remove the thing from the DOM, the amount of information that CSS has when you removed it is too low. Oh, I know what's happening. Because it's pure CSS, the addition of this class triggers the fade out. So if you wanted to do this programmatically, you still have to do a lot of the code yourself. So you have to have like a whatever code removes things needs to first add the class name. So this is what you'd have to do is motion opacity out zero is currently removing and have this currently removing state that exists in between when a user removed it and when it actually gets removed. So you have to apply this by hand before you take the element out of the DOM. Believe it or not, this is one of the things that React Native gets really well that the web kind of sucks at is you can't block the removal of an element on an animation. So I can't say to the browser, hey, when you try to remove this image, please do this first. And that's why things like Frame or Motion and other animation libraries that run in JavaScript are so useful because there's no other way to do this. There is no way to, on removal of element, do animation unless you write it yourself in JavaScript or use a library where it's written in JavaScript. But this concept is exclusive to JS, which kind of sucks because CSS animations can do so much and go so far. But the only way you can do this is to remove the element after and manually handle the CSS in the interim. But that's also why these other solutions are so interesting. Let's take a look at Glaze, a utility-based animation setup for the web. It's built on top of GSAP, which is a powerful animation library that allows you to create complex animations with little code. GSAP is dope, and I am nowhere near smart enough to use it. The things they do in GSAP are not things you can do with just CSS. Greensock is nuts. And you, as they say, you can animate anything JavaScript can touch, delivering silky smooth performance and unlimited or in unmatched support so you can focus on the fun stuff. I will say, usually when you have a website that's this heavily animated, the performance is trash. It is surprisingly smooth to scroll around this site. They know their shit. And the amount of animate, like this is insane. It's actually insane. So a library built on top of that, that is in a syntax I can actually understand somewhat. Okay, I can actually understand, might be a little bit of a reach here, but we'll dive in. Data animate, interesting. So you have this data animate property that we use to specify what animations we want. So if I'm understanding this correctly, then in 
at small, so the display port is small or larger for following Tailwind rules. Then we want to have a duration of one, start with alpha zero, rotate 180 degrees, and move Y up 50, and then an ease and out for how it actually eases. Yeah, that looks right. So it rotates 180 degrees, it moves up 50, and it fades in from zero. So auto alpha, I'm assuming, is it goes to one, and you're telling it where to start. This all makes sense-ish so far. Define custom breakpoints and animate elements at different screen sizes using at size syntax. Use a GSAP's match media. So this is very similar to Tailwind. You can compose timelines using at TL. So this is a concept of timelines, very interesting. You can use dot notation to control nested properties inside of the animation object. For example, two colon scale 1.5 bar scroll trigger to trigger, and then the and symbol here. Interesting. I don't know if I'm smart enough for this one. We are going to dig in and see. Syntax. You have the breakpoint. You have selectors. By default, animations are applied directly to the element itself. However, you can target other elements using selectors enclosed in blocks. So here you're saying you want to animate all sub H1s. This is actually clutch. This I was not sure it would have, and I am positive the motion one doesn't have it. This is winning me over to Glaze now, actually. Oh boy. The ability to say, I want every sub H1 or image or whatever else to do this specific animation, especially if you can also trigger animate out with this. Okay. You're winning me over. Can't believe I just flipped everybody from one solution to another. The at symbol refers to the parent element allowing you to specify a child selector. You can even do it with media queries. That's very interesting. There are from and to states, which is where you're starting from and where you're going to. If all states are defined, the animation will run from the initial state to the final state. So from opacity 0 0.5 to opacity 1. Makes sense. 2y% percent 10. So animation objects, specifies the properties to animate, chaining properties, two opacity one, y percent 10. Now these two things will happen at the same time. Two is in TWO, not TO, although if both fit here, funny enough. Important message from Gabriel that I probably should have brought up earlier. This one is not for people who are new to animations and it is not for simple sites. I agree. I, I will say I feel more than ever there is this gap between simple animations and I guess real ones where stuff like what we just saw with Rombo gets you really far so much of the time. There's also cool stuff like auto animate, which is a great library I covered in the past with my first viral videos, which lets you import their JavaScripts. And from that point forward, your stuff is just animated. So when I click in auto animate and I move up, it just does that for you. You didn't write any code to tell this to animate this way. You just add a ref for animation parent and you're done. And it works in pretty much every framework. You have V, auto, animate, and view, etc. So if your goal is to just add nice-ish interactions to something like, oh, this is the buttons to do all that, but like just sorting, flipping like that, which is really nice, clicking to remove things and having it all move around. These types of things, auto animate does really well, but as soon as you need any level of customization, you're screwed. Something like what we just saw with Rombo and Tailwind Motion lets you have a good bit more granular control, but nothing around removals. So there's a checks and balances here where this solution is pure CSS and works great with Tailwind, but you don't get control over how things get removed from the DOM at all. And then you have stuff like GSAP and now Glaze where you get full control, but that means you need to know a lot. Very, very interesting. Seems like more than ever, we have a ton of great options. I went in pretty certain of what I wanted, and I'm honestly coming out a bit more confused, but also quite a bit more excited. There are a ton of awesome options now, more than ever, and I'm curious which ones you guys like the most. Are you hyped about auto-animate in JavaScript? Do you like the direction that Tailwind Motion is going? Are you all in on GSAP? Or are you just using view transitions and letting the browser do its thing? Until next time, fade out.